Welcome to another episode of Simon Says, where facts come first. I'm your host, Jenny Simon. And today we're going to do a little update. Well, not a little update, no, guys. It's a big update. And then we get to the meat of the matter. And of course, we would close up with some is it true and some questions that we need answers to. So with the update, um, hmm. the question we've been asking here on Simon Says, and that the leader of Her Majesty's opposition, or His Majesty's opposition, Honorable uh, Keith Mitchell has been asking in the law house, have been answered. Well, at least some of it. But was it answered in earnest? You be the judge. In a document captured the government of Grenada memorandum from uh, the Minister of Finance to the Clerk of Parliament, uh, dated April the 22nd, 2024, subject responses to questions asked in the House of Representatives. I um, I am going to read for you from there. Um, give me a minute. Let me just pull this up here. Um, you have to bear with me. I traveled, came back yesterday evening and put this together um, because I know what you say if you didn't see me today. <laughs> so um, just give me a minute, let me get pull it up. Found it, found it. Right, so uh, it reads, references made of your memorandum dated March 8, 2024, caption questions to be asked in the House of Representatives. And um, I wish to respond with the following status of date as at April 19, 2024. And this I here is the Minister of Finance, Honorable Dennis Cornwall. And there, there are nine, one question with nine subsections. Uh, one question, sorry, with nine subsections. Uh, and the first one, what was the budget provided to the NOC? And that's the National Organizing Committee. And um, the answer, the allocation for the independent celebration, as stated last year in the budget speech, was 15 million full stop. And I want you all to listen carefully, right? Was 15 million full stop. The celebration began with launch on October 31st, 2023, and will continue throughout 2024. The allocation for 2023 was 7.5 million. We all know that. That was the supplementary budget they got um, towards for the last quarter of 2023 to start the celebration. They got an allocation of 7.5 million. And the allocation for 2024 is 7.5 million. No. This is the first I'm seeing and hearing about this. No, we gave 7.5 million for last quarter of 2023. And we gave 7.5 million for all of 2024. And including the, the grand celebration on the 7th with the drones and the fireworks and all of that. 7.5 million. So, when he answered and he said 15 million on the top there, full stop, 7.5 for 23 and 7.5 for 24, he brought it up to 15 million. This allocation is provided to the NOC as the leading entity responsible for the execution of the various components of the celebration. No, somebody gave him an idea. 
right? But the, what we remember, and, and you're going to come to it. So now it's 15 million, the, uh, the total allocation, according to um, Minister Dennis Cornwall, Minister of Finance. Let me walk you back. Let me walk you back. Let you forget. On August the 29, 2023, in the Senate, in a supplementary budget, the leader of government business, Senator Adrian Persuader Thomas, announced an allocation of $7.5 million to begin the celebration of the 50th anniversary, our Jubilee celebration. This is what he said there. So, Madam President, a budget of $7.5 million is allocated to this very important activity. Allocated. And I want to say allocated because the working committee that we have in place, they are in the process of planning and giving the details of what those activities will be like. And we want to make no mistake to come back to this house again when we get the details of the planning. One may argue the question, but why you didn't do the detail first? Yes, we could have done that. But Madam President, we believe that if the fact that it was not done does not mean that we cannot cater for it. So we're going to allocate $7.5 million to this program. And also, I want to tell this House that this administration is a very accountable administration. And it will not be any fly, anything flying by in terms of abusing the $7.5 million. You don't have to tell us that you're accountable. Actions speak louder than words. Let us see the accountability. It's not there. It's not there. So we know that 7.5 was allocated for the last quarter of 2023. Then on December 4th, 2023, in the budget presentation, the budget statement for 2024, the Minister of Finance, Honorable Dennis Conwell, announced an allocation of 15 million towards the rest of the celebration. 15 million, and that is the celebration for 2024. Let's hear what Dennis Conwell had to say. The speaker, the rest of the celebration holds great promises as we commemorate the past 50 years and embrace the next 50. The year-long celebrations, which is expected to have significant economic spill-up, should cost approximately 15 million covering events and commemorative activities that will mark the significant milestone in our world history. So you heard him there. The rest of the celebration has an, an allocation of 15 million. Somehow, in the answer to the, the leader of the opposition question, he dropped 7.5 million somewhere along the way and just totaled it because money they can't, uh, 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 um, they, they, they can't say they cannot account for this. So it, it's been reduced. That and the fact that it's a year-long celebration. So we can't say this no, we can't give you this no, because it's a year-long celebration. And then the question came after the 7th of February. The leader of Her Majesty's opposition in the low house parliament asked the question, subsection one, which I just read out to you. Um, on the total allocation. This is how it went, whilst the Minister of Finance was unable to answer most of the questions, he was put on the spot to answer that particular question. Mr. Speaker, therefore, I stand to ask, but before I say this, really it was one question I asked. It was just several parts. As you can see, they all correlated. So really, I just stand to ask the one question standing in my name. There's just several parts. It should have been A, B, C, D, E, F, and so on. Um, to the Honorable Minister of Finance, uh, I just note that 
two parts were not allowed, but we are, Mr. Speaker, and I would speak about this accordingly. So, Honorable Minister of Finance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to indicate that I have acknowledged receipt of those questions. Nine subsection of those principal questions. I must also say that um, the National Organization Committee was the committee charged with undertaking the activities for the national independence as well as the parish activities that is now, now ongoing. Um, some of the questions, I will not be able to answer them immediately because they will require that all the activities be conducted and uh, an audited financial statement of the events would need to be put in place before I can give you an answer that is going to be authentic because I would not want to put my foot in my mouth at this point in time to make statements that are not factual because I don't have the data. However, I have communicated with the National Organization Committee to provide me with most of the answers that are available at this point in time. So I will wait until I get a feedback from that organization with the questions that I've given them so that I'll be able to at least report to this honorable house. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you, Honorable uh, Minister for Finance. But I want to urge that the, the answers to the question be provided by the committee to the Honorable Leader of His Majesty Opposition before the next sitting of this Parliament. Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Yes, Mr. Speaker, um, to due respect to the Honorable Member, um, I understand the point that's been made, but if the Member looks carefully, the first question said, what was the actual budget provided to the National Organization Committee? It didn't talk about, ex well, that portion didn't talk about what is spent and what is accounted for. It asked for what is the budget that was provided and the, the government and the ministry ought to have, have that number. I mean, people can't get money without um, the initiative of the resources of it available to it. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, I, just to make a point on this one, there are other parts that could, of course, be answered too, but I just make a general point. I appreciate if the member, the minister did not have the information, all the information, um, and then it was said to provide it at a later date, and that's okay with me because it's happened before in this house. But that question does not call for any auditing of reports. Honorable Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, with reference to the subsection and the question that's asked about the budget that has been provided for the independence, it's no secret because it's a public um, information that sometime in September of last year, we came to the House with a supplementary estimate to the amount of $7.5 million for the carnival activities. We said that um, this was needed to provide for activities that would have actually been needed prior to the independence itself. And again, in this Honorable House, Mr. Speaker, we did pass a budget that included the sum of $15 million for the independence celebration. Um, if I should add both of them together, I think it works out to be about $22.5 million. However, right. First of all, let me correct you, Honorable Connell. It's not carnival activities. It was for the independence celebration, right? Good. So he then gets up with an attitude because, I mean, you should know that. We did say we allocated $7.5 million in September of 2023 for the last quarter of 2024. Um, 2023, I'm sorry. And then $15 million for the um rest of the celebration so if you add that it's like you're a mathematician add it you 7.5 and 15 gives you 22.5 million dollars 
how we reach at 15 in the answer, 7.5 for 2024 and 7.5 for 2023. Deceptive. Deceptive. And look who, look who, look who he, he given that, the mathematician. I'm not a mathematician, I'm far from. But I could count, I could add, I could subtract, right? And the, the total is 22.5 million, and that's what we're working with, Mr. M M Mr. Minister of Finance. We're working with 22.5 million dollars. There's a little something left in the model besides the peso. But we would get it, we would stick at it, and we would get to it. Moving along. Subsection 2. We were, taught, we were only given three, three um, contracts. And let me get, pull up here again, um, and get to subsection two. Subsection two, right. Were contracts awarded in keeping with the Public Procurement Act? If so, please provide evidence of same and the answer as the 50th anniversary celebration is a year-long celebration the award of contract is an ongoing process however please see correspondence for the Pro procurement board now what they did there was to give us three, right? We didn't see nothing for the for the drone, right? Um, for decoration, a lot that that happened already that that is missing, and so we need to know about this. But let's go to the three that they sent for us. Well, for the, um, I say that because we first started asking on Simon Says. Then the, the, the leader of the opposition, I guess on behalf of the opposition and the people, uh, started asking in the, in the parliament. So we have here a letter, September 20th, 2023. And this letter is addressed to Ms. Carvel Lex. Cabinet Secretary, Acting Cabinet Secretary, Office of the Prime Minister, so Eric Gary Garden, Santin St. George's, dear Ms. Lynn, no objection or no ob objection to award contract lighting project of the carnage for the 50th anniversary of independence. No, in, initially when I read it, I'm like, Miss, the, the cap said, is the person that got the contract? Because the letter was addressed to her. However, they are telling her for whatever reason that this is to certify that the procurement board had given it no objection to the award of contract to Luma lighting decor for the lighting project of the carnage for the 50th anniversary of independence EC dollars $290,750 please note that, that pursuant of section 17 of the procurement act this number objection no sorry there's no objection is subject to luma lighting the call fulfilling all taxes and nis obligations to the relevant authority and it is signed by mr mike sylvester chairman of the public procurement board no that's one right let's get to the next one 
Now that one is for the lighting, the actual putting of the, the things, the string, I guess, with the bulb, right? This one, again, addressed to Ms. Lett, and this one reads, this is to certify that the procurement board had given a no objection to the award of contract to metal, metal masters for the lighting project on the carriage for the 50th uh, anniversary independence. EC dollars, 503,075 dollars. You know, that one is for the metal poles, I am imagining, the ugly metal poles. Please note the same thing that you have to pay, the, they have to pay the tax and the NIS, all right? Address to Ms. Lett again. Now, if you're like me, you're wondering why these letters are addressed to Ms. Lett. This one also addressed to Ms. Lett, and this one, this is to certify that no objection has been offered to award contracted to five thousand fireworks for the fireworks for the launch of the 50th anniversary of independence in the amount of EC dollars, $20,300. This no objection has been provided in accordance with the clause 35 of the public procurement and the Disposal of Public Property Act, negotiated procurement. And the same thing goes for the paying of the taxes and all of that. Now, those were the only three provided. We had all kind of box bill for the, for the VIP people. We didn't get, we didn't know who get that contract. Well, we know who get the contract, but it's not written here. And how much the person was paid. That's the husband of the, the, the lady in the secretariat, Ms. Purcell, who is the chairman of the secretariat, or chairwoman rather, um, and, and, and there were all sorts of contracts coming out from the secretariat. We didn't hear what, nothing about that. Um, the, the brother of, of, of the creative director, the sister-in-law, we have not heard. We, we need to get all of those, all of those, right? Subsection two, that's what we got there. Put on your, your seat belt. Fasten up, fasten up, it's getting better. There was no publication or bidding. It was basically single or sole source, those three contracts. Now, this, the three, as I said, mentioned, they were shared with the captain. They were sent to her. And the only reason I can think, she's a, the secretary to the cabinet, is that the cabinet probably sent these names to the procurement board to get the job. And so it went through the capsule. And so now the board is answering to the, back to the capsule who's going to relate, I guess, to the cabinet and then probably send on the contract to the relevant person. Section 35, as referenced there in, 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 in one of the, the, the letters of the Procurement Act reads, a procuring entity may use negotiated Procurement as allowed under subsection two or three, as long as the purpose is not to avoid competition. Two, a procurement entity may use negotiated procurement when A, there is only one supplier, contracted, or service provider who can supply the goods. So if it's only one person can do that job, you do, that's where you get sole entity. Works, um, can, uh, well, who can supply the goods, works, or services being procured 
or service provider who has exclusive rights in respect to the subject matter of procurement. And there is no reasonable alternative or substitute for the goods, works, or service or services. So if there's no uh, alternative substitute, then they get the job. <clears throat> Owing to a sudden unforeseen event, there is an extremely urgent need to the goods, works, or services being procured. So if you're in a hurry and there's, there's an urgency and you can't have time to put out the tender, then you go with the sole entity. Because of the urgency, the other available methods of procurement allowed by the provisions of this act are impractical or would cause delay. And the circumstances that give rise to the urgency were not foreseeable and were not result and were not the result uh, of conduct or the part of the pro, uh, procuring entity. A lot of, you know, these things, these legal things, all they're saying is that there are reasons why a company can get the job, a sole entity, and in this case, we are not seeing, if you follow section um, 35, the reasons for sole entities. However, all three of them receive the job. Corruption, corruption. Now, question, why was the cab sex sent the result of the businesses who was awarded the contract? So that's a question we need to be answered. The chairman of the procurement board, P.S. Mike Sylvester, who is the P.S. in the Ministry of Finance, is the brother of the Minister of Finance, wrote to the CAPSEC, informing her of these awardees. Why? Why? In my mind, it could only be because there's some kind of hanky-panky taking place through the cabinet or a subsection of the cabinet. It may not be that all of them know about it but a subsection. <laughs> so the award was given to Metal Master, a sole trader owned by Mr. Jason Friday, company registered on May the 15th, 2023. Luma, owned by Godfrey Marichaud. And the Spice Fireworks, still trying to find out who is Spice Fireworks and when they were um, registered and that type of thing. Because you know, after 2022, um, June 2022, people were told, go and form companies. Go and form companies. Companies for so. And then you come and you get the job because you're a supporter. Now, Jason Friday, Paliwali, best friend of Mr. Orlando Romain. And um, Mr. Mr. Romain, let me get a little, little bit back there again. A little, let, 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 uh, Mr. Mr. Romain is in charge of the creative desk. He's ambassador, um, special envoy to, for ICT and the creative. Um, we had to find out how much money was spent on on leash, and we we were promised an update as to how much money was spent. We yet to find out. Um, on Unleash, we know that 30 million was allocated in the first budget to that desk, that one man desk. Um, how much money was spent from that 30 million? Is it true this special envoy is vigorously looking for a house to purchase and an estate as well? Well, so we're going to plant ganja or what? You're looking for an estate. Now, but you have a lot of job, eh? Maybe when you add up, maybe 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, then you might be getting a little 30 to be able to go home with, right? 
I don't know, I'm, I'm just asking the question, yes. Yeah. But there are lots of contracts, as I said, missing. The drums, the decorators, stage light song, the creative directors. I think we had the creative directors squared up. The communication is social media marketing person whose in, um, name was written on invoices. How much was paid for the theme song? The writers of the theme song. It was Ryan DeRee, son of Chris DeRee, and the chairman of the cultural foundation. Listen, nobody have one thing doing the loop. Is chairman of the, the cultural foundation. I think he is chairman of the marketing board as well. The, the, the board of the marketing board as well. And um, Aquino Romain, brother of Orlando Romain. The Romain doing well this round. The Romain doing well this round. Who designed the, and that's a subsection three. Who designed the Grenada, um, the Grenada Sun 50 logo and how much was paid to the service provider? And the answer from the Minister of Finance. Mr. Ordell DeRay, I think he's the nephew, I stand corrected, but I believe he's the nephew of Chris DeRay, won first prize of $5,000. So he got $5,000, he won the first prize, and each semi-finalist was paid $500. So we told. I mean, something as simple as that could have been in the news. Why are we hiding? It could have been in the news. This is the person who won. This and the finalists. These are the finalists. Mr. Derek. That is that I have to specify now because we have a lot of Derek's there, right? Ordell Derek. That is Ordell Derek worked with, or probably still is working for Mr. Orlando Ramin of Hexfire. There's that name again, Mr. Orlando Romain. Connected to people who get in contract, friends, family, who um, um employee, employee. After three came five. They skipped four. I think um the, the I heard the leader of the opposition said they didn't answer a few questions, but he would deal with the clerk with that. So after subsection three came subsection five. And the question is, who owns the copyright for the official theme song of the 50th celebration? Answer, the song is not copyright. Mr. John James of Caracou is the producer. So if Marcel won in Trinidad or Skinny Banton or whoever won, they could change, switch the words and they could go with that. It's not copyright. So we were told. How much land, and this is subsection six, how much funds, I'm sorry, how much funds were raised from the sale of independent paraphernalia to the state of Grenada? Which revenue header in the budget would the funds be categorized? And the answer, as the 50th anniversary celebration is a year-long celebration, the sale of independent paraphernalia is not yet finalized. Subsection 7. Were any payments made to members of the Secretariat? If so, please provide name, position, and among peers. Now, from what I understand by that question, we not they would um he was not speaking of um workers and their monthly salary. It's if you're in the secretariat and you've got a contract on the side, something to do, how much? What's your position there? What's the contract you get? And this is what I understand, it may not be so, but that's how I understood it. Anyhow, 
The answer, the members of the Secretariat are compensated based on their respective roles. And there is a, 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 a sent, a chart was sent, and um, so let us go back to the original document where we would get that chart. Interesting chart it is. Very interesting chart. So let's see, let's see here. And the first name is Joel Simon. And Joel's position is a store clerk. And Joel's monthly salary is $1,500. And then there's Jonathan Telford, store clerk, project officer, $1,500. Katie Hood, the driver, $2,000. Anya Ferguson, administrative assistant, $1,800. Abigail Ellis, marketing and project assistant, $3,500. Anderson and Twine, project officer, $3,500. Marilla Hagley, this is a retiree, project officer, $4,000. Tia Cummins, project officer, $4,500. Jackie Alexis, project officer, $4,500. Zoe Hagley, marketing and communications coordinator, $4,500. Ricardo Keys Douglas, no, this one, I kind of had a pullback. Because early in the game, I spoke to Uncle Ricky. He said he was um, the overall creative producer for the celebration. Remember, I ended up calling him out on the matter because that's what he told me. Then apparently, it was reduced to some three events only and not the total. Harry is on the, the secretariat list of employees employees and um he's listed as creative producer and his salary monthly salary is nine thousand dollars well you know me i like to get my facts when i know somebody and how no i can read somebody i did reach um mr king douglas last evening and he said to me i said well i didn't know you were employed by the secretariat and he said to me he was not employed. He was he he gave his total a guess and they paid him monthly nine thousand dollars. He was contracted for what he was contracted for. So he got it in 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 in, in trenches. He got, you know, and his his stay there was five months from February. From, from October, I'm sorry, or September, somewhere. Anyhow, it was five months to, to February. After the big celebration, you know, he did um, fork in the city, and then he was on his way. So it was five, a total of five months. So five months at $9,000. That's about right there, Uncle Ricky. That fuck is heavy. Um, and Gail Purcell at the bottom there, Head of the secretariat, well, no with a cool ten thousand dollars a month. Now, as I said, I know for a fact there are persons missing from this list here who worked with the secretary or worked with. I'm not sure what's going on now if it's still functioning, but I think it is because they keep saying it's a year-long celebration. As a matter of fact, I think they total it to 14 months. So there we get, there we go. Big money is spending there. Big money is spending there. Nonetheless, I have a question. Noticeably missing is an accountant. Who is the accountant for the secretariat? 
So no wonder why Ms. when Ms. Wilson was asked the question, she, she said she couldn't she couldn't say because there's a lot of contracts. And she did say it was a lot of contracts, eh? And they sent us three. She said so to the, in, in a press conference. There were so many contracts and, and she couldn't come up with the figure yet. And so but they sent us three mainly ones. The light and the light stuff work already, yeah, half of it working on the carinage and half not working already. Take down that ISO, please take down that ISO. The question, as I said, noticeably missing is the accountant. Do we have an accountant at the Secretariat? Somebody who knows a little bit about figures and could add quickly and tell us <laughs> what the contracts were and the total and, and, and that sort of thing. And, and to add for Mr. Cornwall as well, because he seemed to have subtracted a 750, 7 million, um, the 7.5 instead of adding it. Now, as I understand it, Ms. Zoe Hagley, who was a former worker of Mr. Orlando Romain, and can now collect it for um, 4,500 as marketing and communications coordinator is studying in the U.S. of A. Now, these days, I guess you can do things through Zoom or, you know, in social media, you can just do these things. But why do we need to do that when there are young persons here who can't, professional, young professionals, who can't find a job and could get a little blight for a year, for 14 months. Why would we do that? But, <clears throat> from a work of Mr. Orlando Romain, folks, the thing grimy. It's grimy as hell. And this, like, this is the tip of the iceberg. That's why they give it to us. They didn't have a trust. They had to give us a little something to go by. And you can tell it's sticky. Right? Subsection 8. Did the government of Grenada, through the NOC, pay sponsors, pay or sponsor flights and accommodation for persons in the diaspora to come home for the independence celebration? If so, please provide a list of the names destination and cost associated with the accommodation and travel for each individual. So we need the name, the destination and cost associated with the accommodation and travel for each individual. Answer, not in keeping with the current administrative practices. I repeat, answer, not in keeping with the current administrative practices. Practices. Now that might be so, but you didn't tell us yes or no. You did not say no, that did not happen. Absolutely not. It's not in keeping with the administrative practices. But we also know that there are a lot of practices that's not in keeping and it's been done. So we need a yes or a no answer here, please. Subsection 9, what are the costs paid for marketing and or sponsorship for the celebration? Answer, as the 50th anniversary continues, the celebration is a year-long celebration. The cost of marketing and sponsorship for the celebration is not yet finalized. We want to know who got the contract as well. We want to know who got the contract. Right? You must tell us, we, we don't expect you to tell us what's going to happen in December of 2024, but there are things you can update us with here. And subsection 10, finally. How long will the Secretariat remain in existence? Answer. As mentioned before, the 50th anniversary celebration is a year-long celebration. In fact, it runs for a little over a year as it is programmed to conclude 
at the end of 2024. And you know, it started in October 2023. Therefore, the Secretariat will exist until the culmination of the celebration. And it is signed by Minister of Finance, Honorable Dennis Cornwall. We take a quick break and come right back. Thank you for tuning in to Simon Says. To ensure that you never miss an episode, click subscribe and make sure to turn on the notifications by clicking on the notification bell icon. See you at the next episode. Welcome back. Now, in keeping with the trend, the diaspora is having their fair share of corruption and fraudulent acts. Now, um, I have a big one to deal with, but the gentleman is from the UK and he's going to be on Ireland and he wants to come on here for himself to tell you all what's going on in the UK. So we wait for that one. I, 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 I am anxious, you know, although I got some of it already, but I'm anxious. Now, the chairperson of the Deacon Mitchell Support Group in New York, as she says to someone, is living her best life these days. What we say, Chief Crook and Bottle Washer. Chief Crook, something, something in something, right? Chief Crook and Bottle Washer. Keeping them honest. She has recently opened up a restaurant in the Park Slope area in Brooklyn, New York. This is a lady, probably close to 70, if not yet, in her 70s. After all these years, picked up by the FBI, wanted by the FBI, on the FBI um, list, um, all, all, all kind of thing, all kind of scheme, so to speak. And today, my girl opened a restaurant. Take a look. Just take a look of this. It, it's a. It's a. It's a franchise, I was told. A director of the on the SMB SMC board as the Spice Mass Corporation board. Listen, man, pin in with these things, huh? I'm telling you, man, it is too much, too too soon. You know, everybody seems to be walking around with a long sack, just waiting to shove money down in there, right? So she's director of the SMC board. She is a member of what we call the second cabinet. Um, and, 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 and she's in control in New York. Be it the, the now apparently is totally in control of, of the branch because they have a new, a new, um, chairman. And, um, but she is the person in charge of the Deacon Mitchell, um, support group. She's the chairperson there. And, um, She's in charge of the celebrations going on there. And we have some questions. Is it true the New York 50th Anniversary Committee is yet to give a financial report to the people? Is it true financials are yet to be given for last year, 
2023 Pismas launch in New York. And she's getting ready to host the 2024 launch. How much is budgeted for Pismas launch in New York? Carded for May the 11th, 2024. How these are questions. These are questions from New York. How many airline tickets is National Lottery sponsoring? What is the cost of the venue? How much will each artist be getting for their performance? Will Spice Mask benefit from the profit? Asking for the people in Brooklyn, New York. Moving along. And I want to specifically here speak to the workers. Because of course we are six days away from what we call May Day, Labor Day. Workers Day, whichever one you choose to call it. The workers of Grenada has been duped, has been called, called into believing the NDC was in fact going to regularize all workers when in fact they are now, as we speak, still signing contract workers illegally, according to the Prime Minister, the great lawyer, contract work is illegal. And now they are a part of this illegal behavior. He then promised, before coming into office, one public service. And let's hear him. If you are working for and on behalf of the state of Grenada and you are fulfilling a permanent job, there is no need to have you branded as an Imani worker and there is no need for you to be placed on contract. You will be regularized and made part of the public service. But I just want to reflect a little on the consequences of our workers being placed on contract and of the consequences of our workers being branded as Imanis and placed on contract. The consequences of that are, as I've said, you will not have a pension. For many of the contract workers, the government of Grenada has told them that they are required to pay their own NIS. And I'm calling out the national insurance scheme because we all know that if a private employer refuses to pay the NIS contributions on behalf of his employees, they will be hauling him to the high court, to the magistrate court, they will be auditing him up left, right, and center, and they will be hounding him down to ensure that the contributions are paid. The national insurance scheme is therefore required to ensure that the government of Grenada pays the NIS contribution for all of the employees of the government of Grenada. But Mr. Prime Minister, you don't know what's in the contract. As a big lawyer, if the contract, just as the contract, these persons who got the jobs on the carriage sign, saying, stating that they have to pay their own NIS, maybe, I'm not saying it's a good thing, but this thing about hauling people, it's not just so. Do you know what the contract says? Is the government of Grenada refusing to pay, or was that contractual? Anyway, his disciples caught on quickly. Here is Dennis Cornwall during the campaign. Employment. An NDC government will put an end to contract workers in the public service as soon as it takes office. There is no need for a parallel public service in Grenada. All workers will be given permanent status. This will allow these workers to enjoy the same benefits that a current public servant now enjoy. We will also ensure that all workers benefit from pension and gratuity once and for all. Pension and gratuity. Deacon said, and that is when he was leader of the opposition, in an effort to win over the Imani, 
Regularization can be done by a stroke of the pen. And I'm paraphrasing there. Let's hear him though. In his own words. In that position. Right. And I'm saying the job of the citizen of the government is to fight for its citizens, to protect its citizens, mm -hmm. to encourage its citizens to be in independent, not dependent, right. not vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is the challenge we face. And I'm saying it is solvable mm -hmm. by the stroke of a pen. Yep. And let me make this, this further point. It is actually illegal. Mm -hmm. The Employment Act clearly says that you cannot put someone on a fixed term contract, meaning these short term contracts, when the position they are feel, filling is an indefinite one. Mm -hmm. So the government itself. The question is, sir, why is the ambassador to the diaspora hosting a political program for the NDC? Who's paying? Who is paying Mr. Terry, Terry, Forrester, Terry Forrester as ambassador? Is it NDC or is it government and the people of Grenada? He ought not to be there. And I was thinking it. And then they won the election and the shoes was on the other foot. He came to you, and I'm speaking to the workers now, as if it was you who said you could reg regularize all workers. And here is he telling you why it can't be done. The regularization is focused on the several hundreds, if not thousands, of other persons who do not have those things. And the point that I think P.S. Marshall was making is that in order to treat with that, we simply cannot take all of them and make them establish public servants for the simple reason that it will bankrupt the government. It will not be sustainable. So the, the discussion, uh, the partnership, the compromise has to essentially be how we improve the terms and conditions of these persons' employment as close as possible to that of established workers in a manner that is sustainable. And that involves a number of things. How we agree on a pension formula for them, for example. Uh, how we agree on the, the vacation, etc., etc., etc. So, so that is what the, the the process. Yeah, pension and the gratuity. You, the workers, voted for pension. And I'm not mad with you because, of course, you deserve your pension. You work hard for all these years. You deserve your pension. You didn't contribute to it, but that's the system. That's how it was. That's the the law, right? Um, and so yeah, you are happy and you voted for that. Now they're telling you that mm, it's a little bit of an issue here. If we want to do pension and, and, we, and gratuity and we want to do regularization, it will bankrupt the country. Something the then Prime Minister, Right Honorable Dr. Keith Mitchell, told us would happen. And what did we say? Dorothy, 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 pay the cars, pay the people their money, why talk about? And now we're told by Honorable Deacon Mitchell, it go back up the country. It go back up the country. Then we were told that contract workers would be regularized by 12 months in office, one year after getting into office. Let's hear him. The Congress commits to regularizing the status of contract workers who are working for the government and Imani workers who are working for the government within 12 months of assuming office. Okay, 12 months, one year. We're heading into two years. Then when the pressure was on and 12 months went by, and as I say, we had it into two. He said he or they, meaning the NDC, never said they would regularize by 12 months. I guess dementia stepped in. Let's hear him here. We never said we would regularize the public service in 12 months. We said we would regularize it. And we have begun to do so. 
Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. He just said, they never said so. So let's hear him again. The Congress commits to regularizing the status of contract workers who are working for the government and Imani workers who are working for the government within 12 months of assuming office. Let's move on. Claudia Joseph, after taking office, reiterated the fact that a promise was made to the workers to regularize and it will be a promise kept. She want to keep her promise. Let's hear her. What I would like to assure the workers of Grenada, particularly the young workers of Grenada, we are intent on abiding by our campaign promise to regularize the status of mm -hmm. the temporary and contract workers. Right. To revamp while attempting to um, retain in some way and to, and to gainfully engage those people who are part of the various programs. Mm -hmm. Because I'm speaking now about the Imani and the Empower and the Fly and all the different programs. Yeah, right. Same thing with different descriptions. No. When I tell you all, I think I mentioned this before, that I could spend the day sitting here and bring you clips on regularization. They pound it into the head of the workers. Pound and pound and pound. However, Miss Joseph, Claudia Joseph, quickly realized that that can't happen some some way along the along the way she thought she would be straight up with the workers and the people of Grenada, Caribou and Piti Martin. That said, we also raised the issue of contract work and how unfair contract work is whether it's taking place in the public sector or the private sector and the need to regularize as much as we can contract workers. But let's be straight. We're going to be straight with the nation. Contract work and pension reform must go together. Because we commit to pay the retroactive pension and we are doing so. We understand the import of the ruling of the court. But so as not to do severe damage perhaps even irreparable damage to our economy in the long run, we must work out a pension plan going forward that's sustainable. Because as it stands now, when people retire, they are entitled to NIS, that's public servants I mean, they are entitled to NIS plus government pension, and government pension is is a non-contributory pension, which means the government alone pays everything into the pension fund. Plus, under the NIS law, the government pays 6% six, 6 into the NIS, into the um, National Insurance Fund. So, going forward, that will be a really hefty sum that the IMF and everybody else have already warned is not sustainable going forward as it is. Plus, if we regularize contract workers across the board without at the same time treating with pension reform, what do we do? We bloat the public service. We expand the public service and in so doing, the amount of people who would be eligible for pension so we call on our friends in the labor movement to sit with us and work out an acceptable mode going forward where everyone will be happy. This retroactive government always find a way of closing the stable after the horse bolted. 
you, it was your duty to do all that the due diligence, to find out all about that before you posted every platform, member after member, candidate after candidate, telling the workers that you would regularize all of them across the board, in many included. You told them so. The former prime minister also mentioned about the pension and that it's not a one-off thing and that you have to sit down and put it together probably today when people re retire and go to you to sign up for their retirement you're telling them come back two months down the road come back three months down the road because you don't have the money to pay them you knew that that pension was not a pension contributed towards by the workers. You knew that. But you campaigned on giving it to them, and that you did. A group that put it in the bank and leave it there and pension it, and we, small business and other businesses out there, still waiting on the windfall that you promised will happen when persons got their pension. We still waiting on that windfall. But don't come and complain now about bloating of the public service and, and causing irreparable dam damage to the economy. You were warned. You were warned. Listen to this. You have calls for increment increases that are owed and salary increases that are owed and more increases here and, and then you have pension this and so on I, I, I don't I make it very clear the present situation cannot be compared to 1989 it cannot be in fact this government has never sold national asset to meet debts. We have never done it. Astute management of the economy has been a fundamental basis upon which this government has existed. And a member, when he was part of it, would have been espousing the praises of the government for having done this. So there's no issue of sales. The, person, the governments that have done it, past governments, and the one that are talking now, they have solution for everybody's problems. They're going, to, they're going to now make everybody permanent in the public service. And the private sector, they're going to force the private sector to hire people permanently. And they're going to find the money to give the private sector to pay. Um, and, and they have solution. They're now going to have serious <laughs> Wage increases for all the workers, while when they were in their own profession, they did everything to prevent the workers from getting a basic increase, Mr. Speaker. But all of a sudden, they come from manna drop from heaven. They are now savior for every single solution in the country. Pie in the sky, you know. As someone said, they're simply not ready for prime time, Mr. Speaker. They're not ready for this. Because, as the Minister of Labour alluded to this, it alluded to the question of wage increases is not the same thing where you just make irresponsible statements. It might sound popular to some persons, and if I'm earning wages, I, it sounds popular to me. But you have a wage tripartite. Um, legal responsive act that, that governs how these things are done because it's a tripartite relationship government, trade unions and the private sector that's the only way it has to be done because if you put if you make a decision and, and that happens to satisfy one element of the tripartite grouping and it causes major disruption in the private sector operation and they start laying off workers, then where are we? 
so it, it, is, it is nice to say it, and some people might just go in a ballot box and vote because they expect to get massive increases because somebody promised them that. But it does not work. And we all know when promises like that were made in the sky before, pie in the sky type promises, what happens with disappointment when the election was over? Because when these Imani was expecting to get massive increase, they were all sent home. They were all sent home. But the same persons or the same organization today are telling us that we that they can be doing this and they have everything. Yes, man. Yes, man. Yes, man. It does not work. So, so we need to go back to the drawing board with pension. We need to go back to the drawing board with regularization. And we need to go back to the drawing board with wage increase, minimum wage increase. We do. We need to go back to the drawing board with by weekly payment, we need to, we need to. It was a regularization campaign and it caught on. Let's hear Santi Gloria. It is forward thinking. It is transformation, it's a transformational agenda. So let us embrace it because it is workable. The hospital needs to be better staffed so that the necessary service can be provided. Workers are stretched at their limits. There is a shortage of supplies and medication, and no proper care can be given. There is a lack of job security as many workers are on contract, so this situation affects the morale of workers. Some of the workers are expected to pay their own NIS as self-employed employed people without any contribution from the employer. This is the reality. This is the situation. Only the NDC government can fix that. But all you say this is that no, it's happening still and it's worse. But you just jogged my memory there a little bit, you know. Whatever happened to the transformation agenda? Am I in as much transformation again? I think Honorable Evelyn Pledge shut them up in the parliament about that transformation. She gave them one weapon about transformation. I need nothing but transformation again. Let's continue. Let's hear it hear from Brother Randall Robinson. We supposed Another to be able to speak to power with authority. If you're doing wrong, we're supposed to tell you you're doing wrong and you have to fix your ways. You can't threaten my job. They can't threaten me job and that's why we don't want this contract thing because they're abusing it, brothers and sisters. You have nurses on contract for years. Nurses, are we not enough? You have teachers on contract for years, are we not enough? And Grenadians, we taking that? We not taking that again. We not taking that again. We standing up this time. Is that the administration that sent out a letter to the public service to try and shut them up? Well, we come to that a little later. We moving on. There, I mean, I'm not surprised any of that. Just a bag of air. Let's hear my good friend, Kevin Andrew. We must address in this country and rest assured that the minimum wage will also be addressed. The National Democratic Congress is committed in doing so. Many of our young people are on contracts. Many of our young people, some of those that are employed, are underemployed. And there are many of us here in Karakou and Piti Matnik that are unemployed. And we will be bringing the benefits to you, the young people of Karakou and Piti Matnik. You're not unemployed anymore, are you? You're driving your car. Mm, 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 mm. Let's hear my brother's toes. 
Le barbarisme et votre politique forte is a mode for sustainable employment for the youths and to end the contract work. Let me tell you, a vote for the big four is a vote to end the poverty and dependency. Our people should not be denied opportunities because they support a particular party. I agree. I agree totally, Brother Tool. Let's get a dick. So when I say we will end the contract work, we will end the contract work. Our teachers deserve better than that. Our teachers deserve better than that. They take care of the nation's future. And if we want to have a prosperous future, we must start with the way in which we teach, we treat our teachers. And Mr. Uh, Sincere. If you're ready for proper health care, say forward. Right. So here are some of the plans that we have. One. One, and I want you to listen to that one very carefully. Because we've been hearing it and hearing it and hearing it and hearing it. And it bothers me. It bothers me that we still have nurses who are on contracts. It bothers me that I am working in public health and I am hearing that we still have 200 or so nurses who are not regularized. They are under contract. It bothers me. It bothers me. It bothers the National Democratic Congress that our nurses who are trained who are qualified, are working, giving yeoman service, but cannot be regularized. Okay. And today, almost two years into office, and our new minister of health is signing contracts with nurses what is the first thing you do? You first want to recognize them as somebody in the system. Mm -hmm. So you basically either renew or issue a contract to recognize you as an employee. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's right. the first thing you have to do. So 2024, I want to ensure that every single body who are providing a service within the, the sector be given a contract. Be given a contract. Gotta look at the, we cut a little early there, but even to be given a contract. Contract was illegal. Something that can be fixed by the, 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 the stroke of a pen. In within a year, all contract workers would be legalized, would be um what's the word? All contract would be regularized. All contract workers would be regularized across the board. Folks, as we wrap, is it true the former Minister for Health, while carrying that portfolio, bought himself a $300,000 car, a Prado, duty free, $215,000? This is a gentleman that got $1.7 million from the, the, the GDB for mortgage to build a house. Where did he get the money from? Did he take it from the mortgage? Because this man was a public servant for, I'm sure, well into 30 years. And today, not even two years in now, not was it probably 18 months or less? A year into office, he was able, he's able to buy himself one of the most expensive, if not the most expensive car sold here on island. The me only millionaires that he's driving it. $300,000 salary. And we're talking about 
making the, 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 the less fortunate paying hundred thousand dollars for an apartment over hundred thousand dollars for forget the fifty five thousand and the seventy three because that's not what they're going to be paying that's what they paid you the housing authority for the house yeah and we penalizing them is it true while the minister is spending hundreds of thousands on a car there was still no reagents in the lab up there at the general hospital. No basic blood work could have been done. No antibiotics, no painkillers, no suturing stuff. That's the stuff you stitch up wounds with. Hmm? And, 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 and medicines and materials are being removed from clinics throughout Grenada, Caracou, and the PC Martinique use at the general hospital and we tell them people in the rural area don't come to the general hospital for everything but that's the only place you get in a little something it's <laughs> not even a lot everywhere else is empty princess alice is a big clinic and not a well-functioning one as well why are the workers of the nnib still struggling for their pension money which they have contributed to what? Is it true? They have no one seeking their interest and that their union leader is a member of the executive arm of the NDC St. David's branch. Where's the board of directors? Where's Mr. Christopher DeRig? Can someone tell me why the people, the people already scared resources are spent on the host of rider law for protocol services on entering the country anyone anyone who could answer that please contact me and let me know why is he met by protocol officials at the airport and sometimes taken to the vip lounge Spending our resources. Is he carrying an official passport? That's the next question. And for what? Why? Why is he? On Sunday, you have protocol down at the airport to meet this guy? You must be kidding. Or oh, not serious in this country. Why are what? State resources, why are our state resources used loosely while we still have issues with healthcare? The police officers and, and the wardens, they need uniforms, they need shoes. I don't know if they get um, the baton and the, the, the handcuffs yet. We were out of a couple of weeks ago. Why? This is play play anybody who's friend with somebody could do anything and all they're doing is eating a set of food they're in a vip everywhere and <laughs> food food and drink my family when they're done doggy back home for the rest of the home. p.s um oh come on Act like you're leaders, act like you, you, you lead in a country. But the Prime Minister did say, hungry mouth and beggy beggy. Not me that say. Not me that say. Folks, our Public Service Commission has sent out a circular to its members to be signed by them. I want to read it to you. Let me read it to you because I can't believe this is Grenada in 2024, as we're going to see. They're not supposed to stop us from speaking. I need to know. They're coming at us. They're coming at me for speaking. Right? Um, so this letter from the Chief Personal Officer of the Public Service Commission um, to 
the Secretary of the Cabinet, all permanent secretaries and heads of departments, PSC 147. 28th of March, 2024, subject, use of social media by public officers. The Public Service Commission, the Public Service Commission has been made aware of social media posts made by public officers, which have the potential to bring the service into disrepute. In this regard, I have been directed to, directed by the commission to advise public officers to avoid making posts on social media, which can reasonably be determined to be of a nature which will to bring both themselves and the public service into disrepute. The Commission does hereby request all public officers to be reasonable in their pronouncement made via social media and other broadcast media. Consequent to this circular, the Commissioner would make act would take action as deemed appropriate, should it be brought to its attention is that officers by their posts have brought about themselves and the public service into disrepute are come on disrepute. I shall be grateful if this circular is brought to the attention of all officers who are required to sign a copy of same to indicate that they have read and understand its content. Kindly return the signed copy to this office by the 20th of April, 2024. Public, <laughs> listen, there's another one, I wouldn't even bother reading. And today in, in, in the parliament, they're supposed to be signing something as a passing some, but you know the eyes always have it, some other legislation to deal with people like myself. But um, it's a lot going on behind the scene, and one day I'll let you all know what's going on, some of which is going on, um, because I'm, I'm being threatened to, to be arrested, and no, no. Um, the struggle continues. Our, our uh, um, administration, even before they came into office, they promised, they spoke about housing and the dilapidated state of housing for, for some people or most people on island. And so they showed us some beautiful houses. They showed us some beautiful houses that they want to give the people, not the Chinese one, they want Grenadian houses with swimming pool and stuff. And during the campaign, there was an ad put out by the Prime Minister himself, and I want you to listen to that. The citizens of Grenada need hope. The young people need hope. The middle-aged citizens need hope or retirees need hope. But for tonight's purposes, our hope means homes our people enjoy. Homes our people enjoy. And so the commitment of the National Democratic Congress is to provide and assist in providing homes that our people can enjoy. So if we can now have the video. Home is where the heart is. Where there is a strong home, there is a happy family. Where there are happy families, there are empowered communities. And empowered communities make a nation prosper. What if we reimagined housing on our little island? What if we really tried to make home ownership a reality that every Grenadian can achieve? Proper housing should not be be for a select few, and the dignity that comes from turning your own key should be attainable by all. What if we rethink public housing and make our homes more Grenadian? What if we include traditional aspects of a Grenadian home and make it more modern? The NDC wants to remove the barriers to owning such homes by creating a housing program that caters to all Grenadians. Our plan is to engage in a public-private partnership to provide affordable Grenadian-style homes that will be accessible to every Grenadian. In our first term, 
we will construct 500 homes across the Chai Island state. These homes will be priced to suit the pockets of Canadians who would otherwise not be in a position to own a home. A government's responsibility is not only to foster economic growth, but to also help create an environment that is conducive and comfortable for living. We live in paradise, and there is no reason why our homes should not reflect this. On June 23rd, vote for more Canadian homes. Vote the NDC. Yeah, vote for more Canadian homes. I agree that, you know, everyone deserves to live in a Canadian style home, but everyone cannot afford it. However, if you look on your screen now, you would see the homes they give in the Canadian people now, compared to what they promised. If you look, you see what they promised, and you and now what they're getting. And if you look high up into the mountains, high up there, you would see the type of homes some type some Canadians live in. Where are they sitting on the in, in, in the nettles in the mountains of, and looking over the Grand Island Beach? Our Prime Minister sits up there and looks down below. Folks, that's a wrap on today's episode of Simon Says. It's always a pleasure conversing with you, keeping them on it. Thank you for joining Simon Says to get another episode where facts come first. See you next week, same time, same place. Have a great week. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to Simon Says. To ensure that you never miss an episode, click subscribe and make sure to turn on the notifications by clicking on the notification bell icon. See you at the next episode.